Australia is building the world's longest undersea power cable, stretching 4,300 kilometers to deliver solar energy from the outback to Singapore. That's farther than the distance from Los Angeles to New York. This mind-blowing project, the AA PowerLink, is part of a renewable energy revolution that includes some of the largest batteries on Earth. The Araring battery alone will store 2,800 megawatt hours, replacing one of Australia's biggest coal plants. In South Australia, a single battery will hold 1.5 gigawatt hours, enough to store 60% of the state's solar energy. These projects are turning Australia into a global renewable superpower. But why is Australia leading the charge in battery storage? How do these mega batteries actually work? Let's find out. Australia is one of the world's leading adopters of renewable energy. More than 40% of households have rooftop solar panels, one of the highest adoption rates in the world. Wind and solar power are rapidly reshaping the energy landscape, now supplying nearly a third of the country's electricity. With massive solar and wind farms sprouting across the continent, Australia is on a path toward a cleaner, greener grid. But there's a catch. Solar panels don't work at night. Wind turbines stop spinning when the air is still. Renewable energy generation doesn't always match when people actually need power. The sunniest days might flood the grid with more energy than needed, while cloudy weeks can leave it struggling to keep up. This mismatch between supply and demand has already caused serious problems. Australia has experienced widespread blackouts, particularly in states relying heavily on renewables. In 2016, a severe storm knocked down transmission lines in South Australia, triggering a statewide blackout that left 1.7 million people without power. More recently, in 2022, an energy crisis forced the Australian energy market operator, AEMO, to take an unprecedented step. It suspended the entire national electricity market to prevent widespread failures. So what's the solution? How can Australia continue its push for renewables without risking more power outages? The answer seems simple, store excess energy when it's plentiful and use it when needed. But how? That's where battery energy storage systems, BESS, come in. Think of large-scale batteries as massive energy reservoirs. When the sun is shining and the wind is blowing, they absorb excess electricity. Then, when demand spikes or renewable sources aren't generating enough power, they release that stored energy back into the grid. Unlike traditional power plants, which can take hours to increase output, large-scale batteries can kick in within seconds. But why does that matter? Because this instant response helps stabilize the grid, cutting down reliance on fossil fuel-based peaker plants that burn coal or gas to cover sudden energy shortfalls. Australia's energy market operator sees battery storage as a game-changer in the country's push for net-zero emissions. But is the current capacity enough? Not even close. Right now, Australia has about 3 gigawatts of energy storage, but by 2030, it will need 22 gigawatts. That's a staggering 700% increase in just 6 years. So, how is the country preparing for this surge in demand? The answer lies in the construction of several massive battery projects, each playing a critical role in keeping the grid stable and securing Australia's energy future. What happens when Australia's largest coal-fired power station is set to shut down, but the grid isn't ready to run on renewables alone? That's the challenge facing New South Wales as the Araring power station approaches its 2025 closure date. With concerns about energy security and grid stability, the state needed a solution, and fast. Enter the Araring Battery Project, a massive energy storage system designed to step in as coal steps out. The first phase will add 460 megawatts of battery storage, but that's just the beginning. Future expansions will push the capacity to 700 megawatts and 2800 megawatt hours, 
enough to power over 150,000 homes for an entire day. Strategically located near existing high-voltage transmission lines and substations, the battery will integrate seamlessly into the grid, making the transition smoother and more efficient. As fossil fuels are phased out, the Araring battery will fill the energy gap, storing excess renewable power when the sun is shining and the wind is blowing, then discharging it when demand peaks. The project is expected to be fully operational by 2027, aligning with New South Wales' broader push to reduce reliance on fossil fuels. South Australia has long been a trailblazer in renewable energy, leading the way in battery storage and integrating wind and solar power into its grid. But what's next for a state already ahead of the curve? Enter the Limestone Coast Energy Park, a project that's set to take energy storage to an entirely new level. At the heart of this initiative are two massive grid-scale batteries capable of storing an incredible 1.5 gigawatt hours of energy. That's enough to keep thousands of homes and businesses powered with clean electricity, even when the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing. Positioned near the southeast substation, the battery system is strategically placed to optimize South Australia's renewable energy output. But how exactly does it work? The answer lies in efficiency. The system will store up to 60% of the state's residential solar power, reducing waste and stabilizing the grid by supplying energy when demand is high. Beyond reliability, the Limestone Coast Energy Park will cut 80,000 tons of carbon emissions annually, pushing South Australia closer to its goal of becoming a renewable energy leader. Located in Geelong, the Victorian Big Battery is already one of Australia's most important grid storage projects. This massive 300 megawatt, 450 megawatt hour battery has been powering Victoria's energy grid since late 2021. But it's not just about storing power, it acts as a virtual transmission line, helping energy flow smoothly between Victoria and New South Wales. When demand spikes, this system keeps the grid stable and prevents blackouts. So how much power are we talking about? During peak demand, the battery can power over 1 million homes for 30 minutes, a game changer during heat waves or storms. By improving market efficiency, it also helps lower energy costs. Owned by French renewable giant Nguyen, the project is key to Victoria's 50% renewable energy goal by 2030, already stabilizing the grid and reducing reliance on gas power. The AA PowerLink is unlike anything else in the world. When completed, this will be the largest solar and battery project ever built. Located in Australia's Northern Territory, it will generate up to 20 gigawatts of solar power, more than twice the capacity of Australia's largest coal power station. But how do you keep power flowing when the sun isn't shining? That's where the project's giant battery storage system comes in, ensuring a steady and reliable supply of electricity day and night. But here's where it gets even more ambitious. Most of the energy produced by AA PowerLink won't even stay in Australia. Instead, it will be exported to Singapore through a staggering 4,300-kilometer undersea cable, the longest submarine power cable ever built. That's an engineering challenge on an entirely new scale. Once operational, AA PowerLink is expected to supply up to 15% of Singapore's electricity, slashing its reliance on imported natural gas and significantly cutting its carbon footprint. Of course, a project this groundbreaking doesn't come cheap. With an estimated price tag of $35 billion Australian, it ranks among the most expensive renewable energy projects in history. If AA PowerLink succeeds, it will cement Australia's role as a global clean energy powerhouse. While these massive battery projects are transforming Australia's energy landscape, they aren't without hurdles. So what challenges stand in the way of a fully sustainable transition to renewables? For starters, large-scale battery storage isn't cheap. These projects require billions in funding. Sure, the cost of lithium-ion batteries has dropped by about 90% over the past decade, but staying financially viable still depends on government subsidies, private investment, and energy market incentives. 
The Australian government's Capacity Investment Scheme is working to attract long-term investors, but securing stable financing remains an ongoing struggle. Then there's the issue of longevity. Most lithium-ion batteries last between 15 to 20 years before degrading and needing replacement. What happens after that? The costs of maintenance, material sourcing, and waste disposal add another layer of complexity. Right now, only 10% of lithium-ion batteries are recycled globally, raising concerns about environmental impact and resource depletion. Can advancements in battery chemistry and second life applications help solve this? The answer might lie in ongoing research. But perhaps the biggest challenge is scale. Australia has set an ambitious goal, 33 gigawatts of battery storage by 2035. That's a tenfold increase from today's capacity. And with the rapid electrification of transport and industry, demand will only keep rising. Can batteries alone meet the challenge, or will solutions like pumped hydro and hydrogen storage need to step in? Despite these obstacles, Australia is pushing forward. New projects, grid innovations, and continued government support are keeping the momentum going. The question is, can the nation stay ahead in the race toward a cleaner, more resilient energy future? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss our latest content.